Thank you. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I wish I was with you in, in, in person, um, but happy to be with you, uh, I'll, I'll be a virtually. The work that you do is, is just yeoman's work. And so I'm grateful for the time that you spend getting to know the candidates, talking seriously. <laughs> Um, um, the audio is, is muffled, somebody's saying. Okay. Um, talking seriously and substantively about the issues that we face and also talking about what it's gonna take um, to make sure we have the type of enthusiasm and energy among the base of our party that's gonna be necessary for us to win in a very tough environment. You know, President Obama said it best. Democrats, we get shellacked in midterm elections. We have because the young people, progressives, voters of color that we need to turn out in significant ways, we're not always able to do. And in this moment on so many of the issues that each and every one of us understands are critical, we can't afford an election where people take off or stay home. And so I think the way we do this is by having somebody that can go to every single community and speak with a level of urgency and authenticity about what's broken and about what we need to do to fix it. You've all heard me talk about making America's basic bargain, the one good job backed up by a union, your kids going to a good, fully funded public school, being able to go to the doctor when you're sick and fill the dang prescription when you leave the appointment, and then to be able to retire with a level of dignity and a community that is safe and clean, that has clean air and clean water. We have to have a nominee who understands what happens when government doesn't deliver on those things. Have somebody who understands in their bones what happens when folks don't have good schools, don't have a family sustaining wage, don't have access to health care, don't have a safe community. I understand those things in my bones. And I think we need a nominee. And frankly, for the next six years, we need a senator who's not only going to be able to win this election, which we will do, but who's then going to spend those six years fighting for you and fighting for our progressive values. And so I will stop there and just thank you again for everything that you do and really look forward to taking your questions. In the room for um, Representative Kinnata. Any questions for Representative Joy? Um, good question. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kenya. I have a question for you um, regarding oil and, oil and gas uh, mm -hmm. exploitation in Pennsylvania in light of the um, fact that there's going to be a lot of pressure on Pennsylvania to produce, really rev up our our whole fracking infrastructure in order to be able to send natural gas um, to Europe to cover their energy needs. So that, I'm worried about that going into the future. And I would like to know what, what your take is. What, how should we handle that in order to not continue to increase our greenhouse gas emissions? And now, First of all, thank you. you may not have, I think, Candidates have four answers now, four minutes to answer questions, okay? Okay, Thank you. Okay. yes, ma'am, thank you. Um, I, 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 share, I share that concern and, you know, I'm the only person in this race that says we should not be approving um, new, new, new permits um, for, for frack gas. I think it's a mistake. We know that it's not only a detriment to our climate and to meeting, the climate targets that have been laid out in Paris um, and which most, well, all scientists are saying that we need to hit by, by 2050, um, hopefully earlier if we, if we can do it. But we also know that there's a real impact to the people and the communities that are around these, these wells, that we're seeing our seniors who are dying at much earlier earlier rates. We're seeing young babies be born with lower birth rates. We still do not know right now the chemicals that are used in the fracking process. They will not tell us. And so the way that we meet this moment is not by walking away 
from our climate goals. You know, the president said this as well. This is a moment for us to double down on clean energy, to double down on things like geothermal, on, on bio, on wind, on solar, on hydroelectric uh, generation. Also, I do think that there's a space and a place for nuclear in the equation as well. But as your Senator, my approach to this would not be continue the status quo of continue to give huge um, tax breaks to oil and gas companies and continue to think we can drill and frack our ways out of this um, in a moment where we are in a climate emergency. As your senator, I'm going to treat this climate emergency like the emergency that it is and work to make sure we can create good paying jobs um, in current and expanding industries and all the clean energy uh, pr production methods that I laid out. Thank you. Another question? Is there a question that came up on the screen? There's something on chat. Yeah. Chat. Mr. Kenyatta, foreign policy question. What's your general opinion of the Middle East situation? Mr. Kenyatta, so, so, foreign policy question. What's your general opinion of the Middle East situation? Yeah, I can I, I can hear you. So my, my, my approach to this, so has, has been this. First, let me just say I'm, I'm grateful a couple of days ago, I think a number of us in the race got the, the J Street uh, primary approval. I, I'm probably me and both of my opponents, um, all, all three of us got it. For me, this as complex as this situation is, in some ways, it's it's simple and simple in this way, that as a country, when it relates to foreign policy, we have to keep our word. Israel is our strongest ally and friend in the region. And as your senator, I'm never walking away from that relationship. And I'm going to be a constant vote to make sure Israel not only has a right to exist, but a right to protect itself, um, that we are standing by that relationship and that we're doing things that get us closer to a sustainable peace and to a two-state solution. I think that we've seen a number of areas of breakthrough. I know that um, Israel is going to be hosting a multilateral conversation with a number of Arab nations, the U.S. as well. And I think that that really speaks to this president's ability. We see it right now in Ukraine, the way this president has been able to pull the NATO alliance together to have a hard line against Vladimir Putin. But he's hired really smart people, understands these issues um, in a deep way. And I think America still has a big role to play in getting to a peaceful resolution to what has been, you know, decades and decades of, of, of war and strife. And so I'm unequivocal on believing that Israel has a right to exist, that we should stand by them, that we should continue our security commitments um, to them, and that we work as hard as we possibly can to get to a true peace. And I think that that's gonna come from a two-state solution. Thank you, Mr. Kenyatta, that, that ends your time. So we appreciate your participation. Thank you so much, I really appreciate you. Thank you, everybody. Take care.